Good morning and welcome to the Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center webinar Tuesday. My name is Mary Jo Williams and I am the network training coordinator for the Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center and I will be your moderator and facilitator. But before we get started, I want to share a little information with you um, about the VISBDC. Has your business been affected by COVID-19? The Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center is available to assist entrepreneurs and small businesses in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The VISBDC is sustained by the University of the Virgin Islands and the U.S. Small Business Administration and collaborates with local agencies to support the small business community. The VISBDC is nationally accredited and provides free consulting, business education training, and technical assistance. Attend workshops with subject matter experts from both the public and private sector. From idea generation to exit strategies, the staff at the VISBDC is ready to assist you. Now is the time to contact them if you need assistance with the Federal Paycheck Protection Program as this funding opportunity is scheduled to end March 31st, 2021. So don't wait. Call or email them to find out how they can help your business grow and succeed. ¿Su negocio ha sido afectado por COVID-19? El Centro de Desarrollo de Pequeñas Empresas está disponible para ayudar a los empresarios en las Islas Vírgenes de los Estados Unidos. El VISBDC es sostenido por la Universidad de las Islas Vírgenes y la Administración de Pequeñas Empresas de los Estados Unidos para apoyar a la comunidad de negocios pequeños. El VISBDC está acreditado a nivel nacional y ofrece consultoría gratuita, educación empresarial y asistencia técnica. Asiste a talleres con expertos en la materia, tanto del sector público Público como del privado, desde generaciones de ideas hasta estrategia de salida. El personal del VISBDC está listo para ayudarlo. Ahora es el momento de contactarlos si necesita ayuda con el Programa Federal de Protección de Pago, ya que esta oportunidad de financiamiento está programada para finalizar el 31 de marzo del 2021. Llame o envíe un correo electrónico para averiguar cómo puede ayudar a que su negocio crezca y tenga éxito. Okay, Wayne, you can share your video at this point. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Our presenter for today's webinar is Mr. Wayne Huddleston. He is a senior area manager for the Virgin Islands um, at the SBDC. For, well, he's a senior area manager for the SBA, and um, he will give you more information about his position. Wayne. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay, Mary Jo? Yes, sir. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Mary Jo said, my name is Wayne Huddleston. I'm the Senior Area Manager for the U.S. Small Business Administration here in the territory. I want to say thank you to our resource partner, the Small Business Development Center, to host these weekly uh, SBA updates on programs that we have going. Uh, this week, uh, I'm going to focus on the Economic Aid Act overview and the changes that brought to programs such as PPP, Economic Injury Disaster Loan, and some other programs. I'm also going to touch upon uh, the uh, American Rescue Act, which was passed uh, after then, about a month ago, and then some new programs that are coming along the line there. Unfortunately, our headquarters... Um, uh, restricts us on how we give information. So uh, right now, the presentation that I am giving is about a month old, and a lot of information is new and changed since that time. So within this presentation, where there's every, anything that's different or contradictory to what is currently uh, enacted right now, I will point that out. Also, after this presentation, I'll provide some additional updates. Uh, we are hoping and uh, pushing and trying to pressure our headquarters to authorize us to give the more up-to-date information in a um, PowerPoint form. We just don't have that yet. But anything, uh, that, any questions that you have about any SBA program, whether it's PPP, IDLE, or any of the other programs we have, I'm going to leave plenty of time after this is over to answer any questions you have on any topic related to SBA. So a quick disclaimer here in the beginning. 
Uh, this is just saying that if I say something that contradicts the current guidance and law that has been passed by Congress and signed by the president, then of course that uh, overrules what I would say in this presentation. Uh, I'm confident that's not going to happen. It never has, but I need to say that in the beginning just because there's also there's been so many changes with things, and um, you know, I, I just want to let people know that if I say it, that doesn't necessarily represent all of SBA and the changes that Congress makes. So I'm going to go through a few things here, where we are with the program, the economic aid funding options with uh, a stronger emphasis on PPP and IDLE. I'll talk about a couple of grant programs that have been approved and additional resources, and then I'll open it up to questions. Um, so with this, uh, the important thing to take away here is that the agency is changing its programs and modifying its programs with a strong emphasis to try to reach all communities within the United States, especially the smallest businesses um, and in communities that may be considered underserved in the past. So there are four primary options uh, in this presentation that I'll cover. There are a couple of more since this, um, but I'll touch upon those at the end. But these are the big ones. The Paycheck Protection Program, which I'll spend a little bit more time talking, but this is a forgivable loan uh, that you get through a participating lender in a community. Debt relief, which is uh, how SBA provides debt relief on payments uh, on certain loans that have been backed by SBA for borrowers. Uh, SBA just pays those payments on behalf of borrowers. Uh, this does not apply to PPP or IDLE, but only pre-existing government-backed, uh, SBA-backed uh, loans that a business may have. Economic injury disaster loan, these are loans and these are not forgivable loans. Uh, these are for working capital and to help with other expenses um, that a business is having a hard time uh, paying uh, because of the disaster, because of COVID-19. And then there's some uh, grant programs, one of which is Shuttered Venue Operators Grant called SBOG. I'll talk a little bit more about that in an in a upcoming slide. Um, okay, the big takeaways of what happened when the Economic Aid Act was passed at the end of 2020. First and foremost, it expanded eligibility and how funds can be used for PPP. It, well, first it made PPP eligible again because that program had expired in August. But when it was reauthorized for this, uh, with this act, it expanded the eligibility and uh, added some little bit more ways in how the funds can be used and still be forgivable in the loan. You can select a covered period anywhere between eight and 24 weeks. Um, it offers a second draw option for businesses. It allows for deduction of expenses. There's more simplified forms than there were in the past. And we no longer subtract economic injury disaster loan advances from a forgiveness application. Uh, there are also some different guidance to increase support for contractors, sole proprietors and self-employed individuals. Um, eliminating restrictions for certain felons. Um, essentially, that eliminates the one-year look-back period for non-financial fraud felony uh, convictions. If someone was convicted of a felony financial fraud, they would still be ineligible for a PPP loan. Um, it allows those who are delinquent on student debts to still apply, uh, and it has some changes to the uh, tax ID numbers that are used to allow for immigrant owned businesses uh, to receive a loan, a PPP loan. Um, for those, uh, what is a first draw loan? So I'm gonna talk about that. So a first draw is simply for anyone who had not already received the loan last year. If you not, had not received the PPP loan and you're now applying now uh, for the first time, you're getting a first draw PPP loan. Um, we did add some new provisions to that, or Congress uh, added some new provisions to that to allow housing cooperatives, destination marketing organizations, certain 501c3 or c6 organizations like a chamber of commerce and eligible news organizations are available for that. Um, however, there are a lot of things that you still must comply with. Um, you must have been in business by February 15th. Um, you can use a covered period anywhere between eight and 24 weeks. Uh, there's some new entities eligible, which I just mentioned. Uh, new covered expenses are expanded and you must apply before March 31st. So I know that deadline is tomorrow. Um, there's been talk of that deadline being extended. It 
uh, was in the House for quite a while, then it passed, and then it was in the Senate, and it passed, and it's been sitting on a president's desk since last week. Uh, I fully expect he's going to sign at some point before the 31st, but just officially, right now, we can't say that. Right now, the deadline is March 31st until the president uh, will sign that piece of legislation sitting on his desk. So as I mentioned, um, this came with some new size standards. I mentioned some newly eligible organizations already. Uh, still eligible are the same organizations that were uh, eligible at the beginning of this program. So just about any small business, sole proprietor, self-employed individuals, contractors, LLCs, partnerships, 501c3s, veteran organizations, all currently eligible for a PPP loan. So what is a second draw PPP loan? Uh, that is essentially just someone who received one already, uh, probably last year, and is now applying for a, another amount of uh, forgivable loan funds through PPP. There were some revised or some changes to the qualifications and eligibility for that program. One is you must have less than 300 employees, no matter what uh, your size standards say for SBA. You must have at least 300. You mu must have 300 or less employees. You cannot have any more. The maximum amount is 2 million as opposed to 10 million for the first time. And you must show at least a 25% reduction and gross receipts between comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. Doesn't matter which quarter you pick, but you just have to pick the same quarter in 2019 and in 2020 and show that there was at least a 25% reduction in gross receipts to show that you were impacted by COVID-19 in a negative way. There are some businesses who it did not impact them or it maybe even helped them. And that's not what this loan is for. So the process to apply is through your lender. Every PPP loan goes through a lender. All the large five uh, lenders here, Popular, First Bank, Oriental Merchants, and Bank of St. Croix are all processing PPP loans. Um, you, you, go, you can go through them. However, you're not restricted to them. Uh, you can go through any of the thousands of lenders across the country who process PPP loans. So if you have an existing relationship with a lender in the States or one of the larger ones, you can go through them. Um, or if you think uh, you want to choose just a different lender somewhere, you don't even have to have an existing relationship. It doesn't matter. As long as they're an approved PPP uh, lender by SBA, um, you can get the loan process through them. You can complete their application process and then they will submit uh, to SBA to get approval. They will turn around and issue a loan or we will issue a loan number and then those funds will be put into your bank account. And then that's from the date that bank account, those funds are put in the bank account, that starts the covered period, the period uh, during which you have to spend those funds in the way uh, that will be approved for forgiveness for the loan, because everyone should be shooting for forgiveness. Again, on this slide, it mentions March 31st, which is tomorrow. Again, fully expect that to be extended. Uh, it's just not official until the president will sign it. Um, if you decide not to apply for forgiveness for whatever reason, then it's just a loan. Uh, the uh, PPP becomes a loan uh, that has a five-year maturity, a uh, fixed interest rate of 1%, no fees or prepayment penalties, no personal guarantees. Uh, if you have a loan that was uh, issued prior to June 5th of 2020, uh, that term was two years. Uh, but that can be extended to five years, like all the rest of the PPP loans, uh, if you just speak with your borrower about that. Um, and then you do not apply for forgiveness. Uh, I mean, you do not apply for forgiveness through SBA. You apply it through uh, your lender, um, not directly through us. But if you, again, if you don't apply, your first payments are going to start 10 months after the last day of the covered period. Um, as I mentioned, you must do it through your lender. Uh, idle advances are no longer deducted. Uh, expenses paid with PPP funds are tax deductible. Um, there are forgivable expenses that are permissible for any unforgiven PPP loan. So uh, those forgivable expenses uh, that have been expanded are things such as worker protection equipment um, or costs that you bore as a result of helping your employees uh, um, stay protected from COVID-19. So in the beginning when PPP was passed, you could use it for payroll, and I strongly encourage you, if you can use 100% of it for payroll, you should do so. Uh, but if for some reason or another you cannot expend all those funds on payroll, 
you must expend at least 60% in order to get uh, all of it forgiven. And the remaining 40% can be spent on utilities, rent, mortgage interest, and then now and under, under the expanded guidelines, uh, worker protective equipment, such as masks or face shield or barriers or uh, those types of things um, that can still be used under a PPP loan uh, and still qualify for forgiveness as long as 60% of the loan was spent on payroll. And then there's a simplified application process that used to be for loans under 50,000, but now it's for loans under 150,000. So now I'm going to talk about the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Uh, that deadline was set to expire December 31st, and then it has since been extended throughout the remainder of the year. Um, the terms are excellent, although this is not forgivable and has not anticipated that it will ever be forgivable. So this will be a loan, uh, but the terms are 30 years um, with an interest rate of 3.75% for businesses, 2.75% for nonprofits. Uh, there is no prepayment penalty. If you wish to pay off that loan early, uh, you certainly can. Um, the only cost to you would be the interest that it accrued during the time you held the money. I highly encourage people that if you think you might need it uh, to go ahead and apply um, and you can at least have those funds sitting there. And if you decide months later you don't uh, wish to carry that debt, you can just return to SBA uh, for a relatively small cost. Uh, now there is a new program that was approved called the Targeted Idle Advance. So for people who had received economic injury disaster loan advance in the past and had not received the full 10,000 or had applied uh, after all the funds ran out, you now have an opportunity to receive um, an economic injury disaster loan advance. Um, SBA will contact you. So SBA is prioritizing um, uh, industries and businesses that are located within uh, economically disadvantaged uh, areas uh, to apply for this. And so SBA will make that determination and will apply and will invite businesses to apply for that advance. So you will receive an email. If you do receive an email, you will be asked to uh, submit some additional information, such as your federal tax return, monthly gross receipts for 19 and 20, and what you have completed of 21. Uh, confirmation that the original uh, loan application is still accurate, the information that you provided in there, um, and so forth. Uh, you, you will, in that application process, uh, you only have one opportunity to submit for a targeted idle advance. Uh, when you do, you want to make sure that all your information is accurate because there will be no opportunity to go back and amend your application or change the information in some way. So if you submitted um, one digit off in your bank account information and the advance could not reach your bank account before that, um, you cannot go back and change that. Uh, SBA at this point is not um, going to be entertaining uh, reconsiderations of loans. So you want to make sure, you want to make double and triple sure that if you are applying for the idle advance and you've been invited to apply, that all the information you submit is accurate and complete. Uh, if you receive an email to apply and you have some questions, you can email targetadvance at sba.gov for more information on those. I'm going to quickly talk about some grant programs and some other things uh, that uh, are not as applicable to as many people here in Virgin Islands, but it is applicable to some. One is called a Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. Uh, $15 billion is available across the country. This is for live venue operators and promoters, theater producers, talent representatives, operators of zoos, museums, and uh, aquariums. And you must have been uh, in operation prior to February 29th. This is not for starting one of those businesses. Uh, it's for helping those businesses get through a tough period. Um, now, in the bottom, it says a promoter must not have applied for or received the PPP loan on or after December 27th. You can ignore that bullet point. Uh, that has since changed. Um, so what to do prior to opening an application? The application period is not opened yet. Um, it will open April 8th is the deadline, or not the deadline. April 8th is the date that the application period will open. Prior to doing so, you should register in SAM. Every entity that receives a grant from the federal government must be registered in SAM. Simply go to SAM.gov, put in your information as a new entity, 
Um, and once you have that inputted, you should be okay, um, and at least to apply. Um, and then you'll, you should determine grant potential if it will be less than 10 million. So I think everyone here in the Virgin Islands would be, would have a, a $10 million, I mean, less than a $10 million grant. Uh, so this uh, grid here applies except for uh, a part that says on the, on the middle part there that you're not eligible to apply for a PPP loan. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the part that says you cannot, uh, uh, you must apply for a PPP loan prior to December 27th. That's not accurate. If you apply for a PPP loan, um, that's fine. You can still get a shuttered venue operators grant even if you've been approved for a PPP loan. You just can't do it in reverse. You cannot receive a shutter venue operators grant and then receive a PPP loan afterwards. Um, however, that doesn't apply. Well, it doesn't apply to anyone right now because the application portal for uh, venue operators grants is not even open. So if this would apply to you as a business, uh, go ahead and apply for your PPP loan. And then when the portal comes open, apply for the shutter venues operators grant. Debt relief, as I mentioned before, this is for business owners who have had an existing 7A loan or a 504 loan or a micro loan that is backed by SBA. SBA will work with the lender to make those period make those payments for the approved period of time. You do not need to do anything. Um, you can get more information on this on sba.gov backslash coronavirus relief. We have a debt relief page on that. If for some reason you believe that you have been making your payments on a 7a loan and you did not receive any debt relief and you're unsure as to why you can reach out to your lender uh, mention this program and ask them why it didn't apply in your case um, but for most it, it should apply so um, but you will reach out with your lender again this is only for backed loans by SBA uh, loans that are backed by SBA not for just any loan you get from a lender all right, key takeaways. Uh, we talked about paycheck protection. That's the big one. Um, the deadline is technically tomorrow. We ex expect that will be extended by two months. It's already been approved by the House and Senate. We're just waiting on a president to sign that. I'm sure he'll do it today, make some announcements, and then we'll be able to quit talking about this deadline tomorrow. Um, debt relief. Uh, that's a program I just mentioned. SBA will make payments on SBA back loans. Economic injury disaster loan. Um, that is available throughout the rest of the year. It is a loan. Uh, one thing I will mention uh, in addition to this, because we're nearing the end of the presentation here, is a recent change for economic injury disaster loan that was approved last week is a raising of the cap. So uh, prior to last week, uh, the cap on an economic injury disaster loan was $150,000. And a business, no matter what their size, could receive a loan no bigger than that amount. Uh, if a business received um, that amount, um, but could have qualified for more if, if the cap was higher, um, they can now receive more because that uh, cap has been raised from 150,000 to 500,000. So anyone who applies now can receive up to a max of 500,000. If a business already applied, you cannot apply again and receive a second loan but SBA will reach out to those business owners who would have been eligible for more funds if the cap was higher, uh, as high as it is now, and will give you an opportunity to receive an increase uh, to the $150,000 that were already approved. Uh, SBA will reach out. And then the other part of the program was certain venue operators grants, which I mentioned earlier. The application portal for that will open April 8th. Uh, so in the meantime, we suggest you work with your resource partners to get the information you need or if you need help applying for any of these programs. Um, SCORE is a great mentoring and coaching organization, offers outstanding resources and templates on its website and can also connect you to uh, really qualified mentors and coaches in your industry. The Small Business Development Center is located here in the Virgin Islands, has uh, business advisors that are very knowledgeable to Virgin Islands very connected with local lenders, understand a variety of businesses and challenges that you may have and can provide you one-on-one -on -one assistance uh, to help your business grow and succeed. They also offer a great deal of uh, workshops and uh, technical, uh, technical assistance, but also uh, 
all sorts of things they can do one-on-one -on -one to help you grow your business. Of course, they offer workshops like the one we're having right now. If you want to stay connected with SBA, please follow us, sba.gov backslash updates. We update that regularly. Uh, we send out regular newsletters. You can also get the newsletter straight from the Puerto Rico Virgin Island District Office, um, or you can contact me directly. Uh, my email is right there on this slide. So is my cell phone. Uh, email is really the best way uh, to get in touch with me, uh, but I'm here full time in the Virgin Islands. But then most of your questions can be answered on our site. Uh, backslash coronavirus relief has all of our programs listed on there. We keep it updated. Uh, PPP program also has its own page. Idle has its own page. Um, there's a lot of great information on those. And anytime something changes, as soon as we're authorized to share that information, we put it on those slides. So with that, um, I'll open it up to any questions you may have regarding PPP, Idle, or anything SBA. Wayne, we are waiting for the president to sign the extended PPP. Is that correct? Yes, it's been sitting on his desk since last week. So um, I fully expect he's going to sign it today. And I think, I think last I saw from the schedule for uh, the president's office today is that he had something scheduled for 2 o'clock today to sign. So uh, I think it will be signed then. But until then, the deadline's still tomorrow. Okay. Great. Thank you. Actually, I see a comment in the chat that he already signed it. Okay. Must have happened just now. Uh, I've still not seen it. So, because okay. as of this morning, he hadn't signed it. Okay. Now, for those of you that are looking forward to next week's topic uh, next week's topic from sba will be how to secure an sba business loan and and the five c's of credit so that will be next week tuesday at 10 a.m on this same channel please be sure to register either at our website which is bisbdc.org or from our facebook page which is also BISBDC. And you can see a copy of this webinar on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. And we also have some additional webinars this week. Tomorrow afternoon, we have a disaster recovery and resiliency series, e-commerce, mastering shipping and fulfillment during COVID-19 on Thursday afternoon at 3 p.m. we have the last of our basic bookkeeping webinar series, and that's financial planning, budgeting, and control, and auditing. Okay. All right. Now, the shuttered venue grant application that's going to be available on April the 8th. Yes. Okay. Great. Oh. Great. So those those are like theaters, live theater kind of. Yeah, live uh, theater venues. Uh, it also applies to museums and uh, other things. Uh, but yeah, it's primarily for live venue and theater operators. Which too, I think that includes movie theaters as well. Okay. So with a, a business whose main business is promoting uh, shows getting events to come to the territory, would they be eligible? Uh, you'd have to check the guidelines of it. Um, it. It depends. So there are there are some promoters and things like that that are are eligible, but it kind of depends on the nature of their business. So you have to really dig down to it a little bit more um, and look at the guidelines of the program. Okay. Do we have anyone in the audience that would like to ask a question? If on air, if you do, please raise your hand and we will acknowledge you. And if we don't have anybody that has a question, when Wayne, you're getting so good at this, you just cover all the bases. 
I don't know. Yeah, we're, I mean, it's a lot to cover. We're, we're getting a lot of information. Now. I expect that we're going to have more uh, next week. Of course, today, uh, now that the president has signed, it looks like he signed about an hour ago. Um, we'll be uh, extending that deadline um, and we'll have more to share. But then there's more. Uh, one thing I did not share, there's also a restaurant owner's grant. We have a lot of restaurants here in the territory. Do I think are going to be very eager to apply for that grant. Uh, that has been approved under legislation that passed and was signed by the president several weeks ago, uh, but that program has not been developed yet. It's just been authorized to be developed. SBA is developing that right now, but that will be a grant program for restaurants. I expect we'll have more information to share on that uh, within the next week or so. All right. Well, it looks like we don't have any more questions from the audience, so that means you get an early lunch or late breakfast. So on behalf of our staff at the SBDC, our state director, Mr. Ted Gutierrez, and the staff on St. Croix and the staff on St. Thomas, we want to thank you for your presentation today, uh, Wayne, and we look forward to seeing you next week, Tuesday. And All right. For any people joining late, you can see the recording on our Facebook uh, page at BISBDC or by the end of the week, you should be able to see the YouTube recording of the video. All righty, thank you very much and have a wonderful right. day. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Wayne.